I like to tell people I don't know exactly what time is, but I can tell them exactly what a second is. A second is 9,192,631,770 periods of oscillation of an undisturbed cesium atom. And time, well, in my definition of time, is that it's a coordinate that lets us most simply understand the evolution of the universe. But that is a circular definition. My name is Demetrius Mitsakis. I'm chief scientist for time services at the Naval Observatory. We have over a hundred atomic clocks here. We use them to compute the time. Most people don't really know how we get the time. Time from your iPhone comes indirectly from here. We have three kinds of clocks here these days. The one kind of clock is called cesium clock, 20-something maser clocks, which you can think of as laser-based clocks. But we are now going to atomic fountains, which use lasers to stop atoms. Then they use lasers to shoot the atoms. And as the atoms go up and down, they are sampled for their frequency from which you can then extract the time. If you put them together and consider them to be one clock, they measure frequency to about 16 decimal points. If you translate that into time, the combined set of four of them will not lose or gain one second in 300 million years, which makes them the most accurate measuring device operationally ever created by mankind to measure anything. Our two jobs here are to measure the time and to disseminate it. It's no good to have the time here and not have it spread to the world. The whole purpose of, of uh, making the time is to coordinate the world. The number one means of doing it for most people would be via GPS. GPS actually broadcasts the time on its own. It's run by the Air Force. The Air Force adjusts its time so it's in line with our pulse per second coming out of here. That time gets distributed to the cell towers, and from those cell towers, it goes to your smartphone. And that's how you get the time. Another way we distribute the time is via the internet. We also have a phone line with about four million calls a year. If you were to call 202-762-1401, you would hear the voice of this man, Fred Covington, who was an actor. And if you looked on the Internet Movie Database, you would find not only his movie credits, but also that he is the voice behind the master clock. And this is what you'd hear. Time. 17 hours, 57 minutes, 45 seconds. Universal time. 22 hours, 57 minutes, 50 seconds. U.S. Naval Observatory master clock at the tone Eastern Standard Time. 17 hours, 58 minutes, exactly. I am asked why we need time so precise all the time. The standard example that we give is that if one GPS satellite is off by one billionth of a second, one nanosecond, then the GPS receiver will think it is one foot closer or further away from that satellite. And by the time it does all the math inside of it, its actual position could be off by two or three feet. So if you want to know where you are to the accuracy of two or three feet, so as to find your driveway, you have to have those GPS satellites synchronized to the nanosecond. I refer to my clocks as my babies, and that I must take care of them. I like to give talks where I say that one of the most misunderstood words is like clockwork. Well, if you're in the clock business, you know that no clock runs perfectly, and some have catastrophic failures. In fact, every clock is liable to catastrophic failure. And if you have a system that depends on the time, you don't want the system to fail because a clock failed. It's something that we always think about, how to make something which never fails. So what we're gonna see in the future is a more and more precise clocks, 10 to 100 times more accurate than they are now. But once we hit the level of 100 times more accurate, a lot of problems come in. Problems involving the, the theory of relativity, which says that time 
run slower in a gravitational field than if, if you're in two different levels of a gravitational field. So if you have a clock that's one meter, which is three feet tall, time at the top part will be running a little bit slower, actually a little bit faster, sorry, than the time at the bottom. I see that might be a problem passing the level of 18 decimal points in accuracy. In, in, in one sense, we figured out everything from a practical point of view, the fundamentals. In another sense, we don't know anything at all. As you may know, there are people who say time could stop, that time could have a beginning, time is a derived quantity, it's not a fundamental quantity. And those are things I can't give any answers to. It's something like being a doctor who may know how to keep somebody alive, but doesn't know what life is. I know how to compute the second. That's my job.